Welcome CAD designers. In today's video I'm going to be going over something that's kind of been a bugaboo in Civil 3D probably up until release 19, 2019. And that's our intersections. I think all of us can get to a point where we get to here, you know, where we're, uh, especially if we're on a tight deadline or something, we usually don't try to model knuckles and cul-de-sacs and intersections because you can model it uh, let's say with the feature line um, or if you dare use the wizard the intersection wizard but they never really stay dynamic you know, even with the wizard it's hit or miss whether or not the wizard's going to work uh, in 2019 i believe there was a, a new feature that came out and it was offset alignments and create uh, connected alignments. Obviously, I think these are uh, not intended to be used the way I'm about to use them, but um, they work for creating dynamic intersections. So the first thing we want to do is for our connected alignment to work, we have to create offset alignments. Now, what these offset alignments are going to do is uh, kind of like we do with our assemblies we could tell civil 3d to take this alignment and this profile that i have offset at a certain distance at a certain slope so in states like uh, texas where i am we typically profile top a curb so there are times when uh, our profile here is going to have to be a, a a steeper slope than we anticipate to get the 2% cross slope if that's what we're looking for. Nonetheless, in order for connected alignments to work, which is where we would have two alignments from two different streets, create this return for us and dynamically update once a row changes. We need to have two connected alignments that intersect in order to create uh, our intersection. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We go up to alignments, create offset alignment. I'm going to go ahead and do this road first. And this is going to be street A. Um, you could go ahead and name this how you want. My offsets are 12 feet. And I can go ahead and set a styles and all this for those. The thing I really want to make sure it does is create a profile for the offset alignment and we're going to have a cross slope of 2%. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now we have those two alignments and profiles. And let's go ahead and do this uh, intersection first. So I'm going to go ahead and go to alignments again, create offset alignment. Let's go ahead and create it for this road. See, I have my settings saved. so. Everything is going to be correct. Go ahead and hit OK on that. And let's go ahead and do this road next. All right, so on the assembly side, one thing I want to make sure is I want to have, uh, typically when I design, I want to have as minimal assemblies as possible. So here you can see I have a full road width, one with the right curb, one with the left curb. But for my returns and my knuckles, I want to make sure that this is set up a certain way. And the reason I, I want this to be set up a certain way, um, I mean, whether you like the opposite or not, is because when we create these connected alignments, the first alignment you select is going to be the one that starts the alignment. The second one's going to be where it ends. So in this case right here where we have the road on the right, what I'm going to want to do is start with this offset alignment as the first connected one. And this is my second connected one. And then going on this side of the intersection, I'm going to go with this as my first one. This is my second one. And that way, this road section is on the outside, which is what I want to tie uh, tie down to make my intersection dynamic. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to go up to Alignments, Create Connected Alignments. And again, I'm going to select this alignment first, this alignment second. And now it's asking me to pick a connection point. We're going to go there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And it's going to bring up this dialog box. Now I can come to the parameters, and what I want to make sure is that this is just a circular fillet. Now we don't want a 250 foot radius. Let's go 25 in preview. Um, and then we also want to make sure that our offsets are zero. We don't want this offset in any way. Hit preview again. So 25 wasn't good. Let's try 35. Oh, let's go the opposite way, 15. And maybe 20. There we go. And so what we want to do is also create a connected profile. And here we could see that the connected profile is going to have a cross slope of 2%. And this one's also going to be at 2%. And then it's going to create our profile for us. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And so now on this side, I'm going to go ahead and show what this profile looks like real quick. Go to Create Profile View. And we have this connected alignment here. We'll go ahead and leave all these settings the way they are. And here when we look at it, there's our profile. So starting here, which is this side of the road, it's connecting. And if we wanted to put a low in here, we could come in and we can edit within these two diamonds. Um, and it's also something that we could have set up uh, in the settings when we created the connected alignment. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that view over there. And let's go ahead and create our other connected alignment. And this time we're going from this direction to that direction. And we're going to click in here. Go ahead and accept those. Our parameters shouldn't change, so we could preview it just to make sure. Okay, so now we have these two sides of our intersection. And what we're going to want to do with the road section is use this alignment and profile as our target to here. And then we're going to want to go ahead and use this center line as our target for this piece. Now, one of the things that I do like about the recent updates to Civil 3D is a little button um, and we're going to go ahead let's add this baseline first select this alignment and it's going to find that profile for me and now we can go ahead and add a region right and so we're going to go from that endpoint to this endpoint and the assembly we're going to use is that curb return and I also like this, that this pops up now. So we don't have any surface targets, but we are going to have some width targets. And our width is going to be on our lane outside super. So for that width, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, this alignment first, and then this alignment second. And what I really like about this button, this new button is um, you can target to the nearest offset. So what that means is once it, it gets past the center line, uh, the offset alignment is going to be too far and it's going to go ahead and pick up the center of the other road. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK there and then our elevations are going to be Let's go ahead and just to make sure that we're grabbing the right one. Street A right. And then we're also going to grab the center of this road. Street C. Again, we're going to make sure that that's targeting the nearest. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and hit Enter. And now all we have to do is come in here and let's edit our frequency. 
let's go ahead and make this uh, one foot around the curve and it has this little gap right here so typically what I do is once I have this set up I can come in here and split this region and split it right there and that'll that'll close it up and so let's go ahead and rebuild our corridor and we can see now our surface is nice and tight and let's go ahead and do uh, the other side so I'm going to select my corridor add my baseline which is going to be connected alignment number two let's go ahead and add a region to this and again keeping in mind the direction we want to go in to make sure that our lane is on the outside so we're going to go ahead and set our width target as uh, this alignment first this alignment second make sure it's targeting the nearest and now let's do the offset and the profile is going to be Uh, street C, Street A right. Go ahead and hit OK, and we'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and edit the frequency, make it one, and then I'll come in here and split this region right at that same spot. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks in our object viewer. So as we come around, we can see that that's a pretty good looking intersection right there. So let's go ahead and see how this changes. So let's, let's go to our street A profile here and um, let's go ahead and Let's change this. To yeah, geometry. And let's go ahead and come to our editor here. And let's say we want to come out at, um, I just want to do something drastic. So let's come out at 5%. So now it's super, well, that may, might be too much. So let's do two. And we will see that when we come up here, that connected alignment has changed. So normally we would have to come in and, you know, do a whole bunch of edits to this guy to rebuild it. But... All I have to do is hit rebuild and there's all those contours. And then, um, so yeah, this that's one way to do intersections. So let's go ahead and do this profile view, go back to my geometry editor, let's make it back to 0.89% like it was before. And here we can see that connected alignment has updated and we just rebuild our corridor and there's our fixed alignment so for these knuckles um, and there's there's a lot of ways to do these knuckles but it's it's the same concept I would do a connected alignment at the center uh, if I want to hold my crown through here and kind of have the water sweep around and then I would go ahead and um, hold this edge and I would target this outer uh, line work. Hope this video has been helpful. Uh, go ahead and comment and subscribe. If you need uh, other information on how to do stuff in Civil 3D. And I'll talk to you guys next time.